Friends and family, you're welcome to come under the tent. As comfortable as you like, there are several chairs. Friends and family, in just a few moments, we are going to begin the service for Mr. Marvin M. Weiler. On behalf of the family, I want to thank everybody for coming, as well as those who are joining us through the live stream. Just a gentle reminder, if you happen to have a cell phone with you, please make sure it's in the silent or, dare I say, off position. Officiating today's service is Rabbi Todd Zinn of Chicago Sinai Congregation. being here, those of you who are here in, um, to help remember Marv together in person. We know that there's a lot of people who are online um, who are participating from Chicago and from all over the country and really from all over the world um, because he was such a, an incredible person, um, an incredible member of our Sinai community, an incredible member of your family. We're going to begin with a, a ritual called Kriya which is a physical representation of the tear the, in our souls, in our hearts, and our souls um, that we have, each of us has right now. And so Yehuda is getting ribbons for the three of you. And we're gonna, um, when he returns, we're gonna tear those ribbons and remark on the, the tear in, in, in our hearts and our souls uh, together this, uh, this morning.
the other the three of you are wearing those red decks, we're going to say a blessing. The Hebrew blessing begins with all these other Hebrew blessings, and then it ends with Dayan Ha'anet, uh, whose ways are beyond our understanding. So the three of you, if you'd like to join with me in the Hebrew, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Dayan Ha'anet. And if you would like to tear the ribbon slightly, We've come together today to remember Marvin Weiler. We've come together today to bring comfort to his family, to his children, Alan and Janet and Linda and their spouses, Julie and Daniel, to his grandchildren, Selig, Leonid, Ayal, Safir, Sarah, Alex and Hannah, and his great-grandchildren, Naama and Gaia. We've come together to remember who he was, the impact he had on all those people who are present here today in this space and those who are online all over the country, all over the world today. We've come together to remember and recount his life and his stories, to tell his stories. We've come together to remember that even though he might physically be gone, his life and his legacy are gonna continue. Mourning is a time that's filled with many emotions, both bitter and sweet. And so we begin our service with the recitation of psalms and prayers, thus linking Mar's life with the millennia-old tradition of the people Israel and the eternity of God. Death will come, and we cannot enter into judgment with it. Our question why is always going to go unanswered. This does not mean that we are helpless in the face of death. We can and we do rob death of ultimate victory by living our lives so that when death comes, it takes us from a world, one corner of which is better because we were there. We join together in Psalm 23, which is on the inside page of the handout. I invite you to join with me in English. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I first got to know Marv uh, studying together in our weekly classes, our Thursday mornings, and our Torah study, Marv was always someone who showed up every single week, and he cared deeply. He cared deeply about his connection to his Judaism, to faith, to tradition. In class, he could always be guaranteed to bring his own perspective, his own history, his own questions. Whether it was a conversation about Israel in which he talked about his family who lived there and his time that he spent there, or we were talking about Judaism and he brought up the more traditional Judaism that he was raised with, or we talked about history, which so fascinated him. And while we studied together, his personality always shone through. His kindness, his thoughtfulness, his gentleness his dedication to his family and to his friends. He was a truly wonderful person, a wonderful part of all the communities in which he lived, in which he made himself known. And he's someone who's going to be greatly missed by all of them. And so we're going to invite those who knew him best, his children, to share some words with us. Linda?
I don't want to be here. And if I have to be here, I don't, I want him next to me. So as long as I can my, remember, my dad was my person. I waited for my dad on our driveway to hug him when he came home from work. In the early years, he always greeted me with a huge smile. I remember showing him how I tied my shoes and learned to write my name. As the years went on, he would always ask about my day, what I learned at school. He always wanted to know what I thought. He would help me write school papers and of course my bat mitzvah speech. As the years went on and I became a teenager, frustration ensued. It helped to be the youngest of three children. If you didn't know, my dad was tall and I am not. He would let me drive his car, but I had to remember to move the seat back and I never did. He got frustrated when he'd have to get up and drive the car the next day to go to work because he couldn't fit in. So we had to stand, these were the days of manual, so we had to move the, you know, move the seat back so he could sit in. One morning he got so frustrated, he dragged me out of bed, brought me down, showed me this is what he has to do. This continued on and for the most part, I don't know why I would still never remember to do it. Of course, my dad, as, as the rabbi said, was very kind and very thoughtful and very generous. So he would never say, you can't drive the car anymore, or this is your last chance. He just wouldn't, it wouldn't have occurred to him to do that. And I also took advantage on some level because I was spoiled. I was definitely his baby. Over the last few years, Certainly when my dad started to slow down after my mom died, we spent a lot of time together, especially during the lockdown of COVID. At what point, I remember we looked at each other and we both said, it's a good thing we like each other and not just love each other. Otherwise this would be really hard. And over time, I became his person because he started to rely on me for more and more everyday things, including all the larger than life conversations that we would have over Israel, the community, his family, our family. He, he, he started to open up on things. And then especially he loved this community of Kenosha where his grandmother grew up and that, and that generation of family that are all connected here and buried here and when the social injustice hit this community he took it hard um, and his ultimate faith in human kindness would bring him back that he had faith that you know this was a blip and this is a representation of the community he felt that way when trump was elected and then when biden was you know elected he said no no, he had faith that the country would turn around, that we would come together. And it was hard. It was hard for him on, on many levels because he was part of a generation that was patriotic and did their duty and believed in, 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 in the growth and in the wonderful things about the United States, even in a time when things were falling apart. He had some trouble adjusting to the, to the new the new norm, as he started to call it, he accepted that with Zoom technology. He remembered and he wanted to go back to his three days a week at Sinai and meeting his friends. And at some point he knew that that wasn't gonna happen. So I set him up on Zoom. <laughs> that was fun. So <laughs> he, he was resistant. And, and anyway, I got him set up and he told me class started at 10. So at 10 a.m., we're on there, try and we, we, we were in, but class didn't start till 11, so Rabbi Sid came on. And of course, my dad would say, well, I'm always on time. I'm always early, and it's true. So you would be interested or maybe not so interested to know that that didn't run on both sides of my family. My mother on and my dad was in time, this and that, you know, everything was early. But on the Wahlberg side, and my cousin, his here can confirm that, that 
time was sort of an ish. You know, if something was started at seven, you know, you might think about getting ready at seven. And you know, it was just, it was just a different way. And they managed. They managed to figure out, mostly with my dad getting frustrated, but my mom over time, sometimes they drove separately, you know, they figured out a way to make it work. Um, I forgot where. Um, when he was my person and when I was his person, he was still my person. I would still call him for all the good stuff, for all the bad stuff and everything in between. And there was a lot of in between stuff, right? Going to the grocery store. And, um, so now that I'm here with you all and my dad isn't here, I need you all to collectively be my person. I don't know what that means, but I think we'll figure it out together. <laughs> Whether it means calling me to tell me what happened on the news, asking me what channel something is on, telling me what you need at the grocery store, or sharing a story about your family or my family, but I will need that. My dad made his death as easy as he could. His affairs were in order. He, nothing was left unprepared. We spent lots of time over the years discussing his wishes, his DNR, and he left me the awesome responsibility of being his POA for medical reasons. So on December 25th, I looked over at my dad and the hospice was there, the hospice nurse was there and it was time. And I knew it was time, but it was still the hardest thing I've ever had to do. And gradually over the week, he declined and he left us. And he would still smile, you know, at the point he would, he would smile, we would get a thumbs up, we would get, you know, these wonderful moments. In the end, I was holding his hand when he took his last breath. And I said to him, I will love you forever. Thank you for the privilege of letting me be your daughter. My dad would hate to see me crying. So I'm trying to think of something that he would want me to say to make you laugh, to make me laugh. And I will say this, he was very, Things were precise for him. So when we had to move the sofa to make room for him in the living room, I moved it out and I didn't care, but you know, that it was straight. And he looked at me and he did this, he pointed to the sofa and he said, you know, signal that it had to be straight. And I moved it and it calmed him down. Thank you so much for those powerful words. And Alan, if you want to... Thank you, Linda. <laughs> Thanks for sharing those uh, reflections. So, I remember Dad in a lot of different ways. And, um, you know, of course a Dad. But I also remember him as a son and a brother, an uncle, a great uncle, a grandfather, a great grandfather, a cousin. And, you know, family was just so important to us uh, growing up, and I know it was to dad. And, you know, of course, we went to the weddings and B'nai Mitzvahs, and, you know, uh, those were very special and important. But we did a lot of traveling to see family that was just, just to go. There was no special occasion. And we'd spend a whole week, you know, just having dinners and, and playing cards and just joshing around and having fun together. And, uh, you know, those are great memories. And so 
family, of course, uh, was was dar- large, but Dad played so many other roles. Uh, you know, he, he worked uh, for a major corporation, Whirlpool, for almost 20 years, and he got increasing responsibilities. And, uh, you know, he touched literally thousands of lives. Uh, the employees, his co-workers, people came and went to these different places that he worked as he, as he, as he advanced. And I know that he, he moved the needle in a positive direction. Uh, then uh, he made the transition to being a uh, teacher, and it was the same thing again. Uh, hundreds, if not thousands of students would have come through his classroom, and they all would have gotten the benefit of how much he cared and his perspectives on things and the energy he put into his classes. And, and the school recognized that too. They, they gave him awards for teaching. But I don't think the award was it. I think it was the daily experience of working with the students and, and, and hearing what their perspectives were and trying to add his perspective. And if that wasn't enough, he also volunteered in many different ways. He was uh, always active in the synagogues that we belong to, the temples. I know he was on boards. I know he was a board president at one point and uh, very active in, in, in volunteering for things and taking a leadership role. And people looked to him for that. They knew that it, they could rely on him. And, uh, and then in the greater community, outside the Jewish community, he volunteered to help people uh, uh, organize for, for greater uh, good and, and, and greater equality and ac- access to uh, opportunities. And so, you know, his whole life, he just lived this. You know, I don't think, I didn't feel he wore it on his sleeve. It was who he was, was to make a contribution, to be there for people, to express leadership, to be a good listener, to add humor to a situation. And uh, people respond to that. A lot of people have told me, even if they didn't spend a lot of time with him, some of my friends and so forth, that they remember him. And it was a positive experience just knowing him, even, even briefly. And so, you know, there's just so many memories, but um, Dad had an impact and his his, uh, legacy will continue. So uh, thank you, people joining on Zoom. Thank you for joining today and people here. Thank you very much for spending this time with our family. Thank you very much, and Janet. I'm reading a letter that my daughter wrote, Ella. Grandpa, because I couldn't be with you to say goodbye in person and couldn't find the way to say all the kind words that I wanted to say over the phone, it means a lot to me to say goodbye this way. In a way, it has always been difficult to convey how connected I feel to you because of our long distance relationship but you always found the way to show me how important I am to you by simply spending every summer with us. Every year when we would come to see you, you gave me and my siblings all the attention we longed for and missed out by not being closer to you. We went out for meals, drove out to fairs, visited museums, ballet, concerts, plays, and movies. While spending such quality time, I learned so much from you about hard work, kindness, structure, and respect. Your influence influence on my life is undeniable. Seeing you care for grandma with such respect and love was admired by all. Waiting for you to finish your morning routine, exercise, breakfast, and brush made me want to lead a structured, she writes in Hebrew, or chayim, way of life. Education is such a priority for you. It was contagious. I always wanted to better myself around you. You didn't have it easy but it never showed. You, to me, are the definition of class, the greatest role model I could ever have. I wish I could say goodbye in person. Uh, And regret that you didn't get to meet Nama in person. I love you so much. 
and appreciate everything you've done for me and my family. Goodbye to you, but not to your legacy. I promise to keep working hard, exercise, brush my teeth, educate myself, and lead a kind life. Thank you all for those powerful words and memories. The Hebrew poet Hannah Senesh wrote, Yesh koch avim she'oram magia artsa, that the, our loved ones are like the stars up in the sky. Long after the star itself has burned out, that light continues to shine. And so it is with people that we love long after they're gone. Our memories of them, their impact on us continues. They continue to shine in our lives. And so may it be with Mars' life and legacy, his kindness, his thoughtfulness, his generosity, his structure, his class. In Hebrew, we say, Zechar Tzadik Libracha, the memory of the righteous lives on as a blessing. Marvin Weiler, Zechar Tzadik Libracha, may his memory be a blessing to us today and every day. I invite you all to rise for the words of El Mali Rachamim. El Mali Rachamim, Shochein Bamramim, Hamse Menucha Nechona, Tachat Kanfe Hashrina, Im Kidushim Vitohorim, Kizo Harakia Mazirim, Et Nishmat Moshe Meir Ben Malka of Alexander. Shahalach la olama. Baal harachamim vayats tirehu beseter kenafav le olamim. Vayitsur bitsur hachaim et nishmata. Arunai hu nachalata. Vayanuach bishalom al mishkava. Venomar. Amen. We read together in English in the middle of the page. O oh God, Full of compassion, thou who dwellest on high, grant perfect rest beneath the shelter of thy presence, and among the holy and pure, who shine as the brightness of the firmaments, unto the soul of Marvin M. Weiler, who has gone on to eternity. Lord of mercy, bring him under the cover of thy wings, and let his soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. Be God's possession, and may his repose be peace. Amen. Please be seated. We now pause as the casket is lowered. camera so everybody could see um, on live stream um, to Janet, to Linda, to Alan, on behalf of the President of the United States of America, an eternally grateful nation, please accept this token of your father's commitment and bravery to his country.
people on their craw. A voice cries out. And I say, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass and all its beauty is like the flower of the fields. The grass withers, the flower fades. When a wind of the eternal blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades. But the word of God shall endure forever. El Nikomo Yavo Bishalom. May Marvin come to his eternal resting place in peace. We're taught the greatest of life's commandments. The greatest mitzvah that we can do is that which cannot be repaid. And so the greatest mitzvah we do today is by burying our loved ones, by performing that final act of care and compassion. Everyone else would like to come and help bury more together. There's two shovels.
anybody wishes to step forward at this time, I'll just say the burial mark is in the As we mark his essence, it'll never leave us. It'll never leave our hearts. He'll never leave our souls. And so I invite everyone to join together in words of Kaddish, our traditional prayer for mourning. It's on the back page. We join together in Hebrew. Yit gadal, yit gadash, shemei rabba. Yama di brach rute, the amlich makute. Behaeho, ubio mehon, de hae behold bait Israel. Baagala, wisman, kariv imru, amen. Yehe shme raba mubora, the Allah wamo ome, O Maya. Yit barach, vishtabach, vit paar, vit roman, vit nase. Vit hadar, vit ale, vit alal, shme de kusha, brechu. La Ela min ko birchata vishirata, tush bechata venechemata, dam biran bialma vimru, amen. Yehe shlama raba min shemaya, vechayim alinu vial kol Yisrael, vimru, amen. O se shalom bimromav, hu ya se shalom, alinu vial kol Yisrael, vimru, amen. In Hebrew we say, Lech ki salach Adonai, go your way, for God has called you. Lech Adonai yeh go your way, and may God be with you. Behalach lefanecha tzedek kavar na'yisvatai, may the righteousness go before you, and the glory of God receive you. We say to all of you, hamakom yinachem etchem betoch sha'ar avlei tzion v'yushalayim, may God console you with all who mourn in Zion and Jerusalem. Friends, this does conclude our service here. In just a few minutes, we're going to ask the staff from the cemetery to do the final closing of the grave. Everybody is welcome to just stay and witness that. You might find it a little bit uh, easier to sit in your car with the heat on. Um, just a couple of uh, details regarding Shiva. It will be by, uh, by Zoom, and the link, as well as the all the information at the times, are listed on our website, chicagojewishfunerals.com. For those of you who are in attendance, that is the information on the inside portion of the pamphlet. I have more if you need it. And just as a reminder, memorial contribution in Marvin's memory can be made to the Dravet Syndrome Foundation or to the Food Bank charity of your choice. Thank you so much.